windows were installed in the elementary school. The unemployed students held a car wash on Tuesday. We visited the museum again this past week. The church renovations have been completed and more, so please stay tuned. Wetland Gift from Ducks Unlimited Canada. ...began a few weeks back on the exterior of the primary section of A.J. Matthews School to replace the windows and siding on the two sides of that section. The windows have been replaced with those of a smaller size. Also, much of the wood on this side of the school had to be replaced because of excessive rotting. Once the windows were installed, the workers proceeded to complete the siding on the side of the school near Shaytown. The unemployed students held their final car wash for this summer on Tuesday of this past week. A total of $266 was raised through this car wash. That's $44.35 for each of the six students that took part. The last car wash held earlier this summer, the students raised a total of $337. A TV bingo held by the students on Wednesday night was the last project for this year's Odd Job Squad. The bingo realized a profit of $835. The Odd Job Squad raised approximately $5,000 through their various projects this summer. A special thank you is extended to all those who supported the efforts of the Odd Job Squad. took a trip to the museum this past week to see if they've gathered any more artifacts over the summer. Darrell, have you had many artifacts added to the collection at the museum this summer? Uh, not a lot, Dave. Uh, we did have a couple of things that was brought in uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, for, for instance, this gramophone over there, brought in by George Eric. And we have this uh, plane, a plane, the wood, wooden plane loaned by George uh, Eric. And we have this uh, compass that was loaned by uh, George Eric. It was owned by his uh, great grandfather in the early 1800s. Yeah, and this this uh, uh, Lego that was uh, donated to the Lawrence Hanson.
But other than that, Dave, uh, everything else has been in there all summer. We haven't had uh, many uh, other items brought in by other people. So how many artifacts are there on display right now? Uh, I'll have to check my book for that. Right now we have approximately 235 uh, artifacts listed there in the book. So how many visitors have you had this, so far this summer? So far this, this summer we've had approximately 810 visitors. Okay, so how are, you, how are you enjoying your job here at the Museum of Summer Dark? Uh, it's very uh, interesting. You get to look back on uh, Virgil's past and other things were used and stuff like that. And you get to meet a lot of people from different parts of Newfoundland, Canada, and the States. We've had uh, somebody from Australia. So apart from that, it's, uh, it's pretty good. But uh, at times, you don't see many visitors and you're just they're sitting down or you know, you're peddling with this and not doing that much and it's a bit boring at times, but other than that, it's uh, very interesting. Okay, Darrell, thanks for speaking with us. Thank you. Now that all the renovations have been carried out, the fence removed, and that area sodded, the front of the Anglican Church takes on a new look. Reverend Charles, a lot of renovations have been carried out on the Anglican Church this summer. Could you briefly tell us what has been done to the church this summer? Uh, yes, we uh, reshingled the church, both sides of the church. We took, I think, about 250 bundles of shingles, and uh, we uh, repaired the entire front end. Uh, it was completely rotten, a two by four and the siding, so we put in some new windows and doors and put siding on and uh, gave the front end of the church a new look. Uh, I understand that uh, you didn't expect there to be quite as much work on the front of the church when you started as there actually was? Uh, no, we didn't know uh, how much work needed to be done on the front end of the church. Uh, well, uh, we knew the windows were bad, but, uh, and, you know, on the corner here, uh, one corner, uh, we knew that was rotten, but we didn't know that, uh, you know, there was so much rot in it because it was almost completely gone. So it all had to be taken out and put back. So it cost more money than we anticipated, and we had no way of knowing before we started to do it how extensive the damage was. Okay, I understand that uh, the roofing shingles were done by volunteers. Was the front of the church repaired by volunteers as well? Yes, it was all done by uh, volunteer labor. Nobody got paid whatsoever. Uh, we were very, very pleased and uh, you know, delighted about that, of course. Uh, at first we didn't think we were going to accomplish that. But uh, the repairs could not have been, uh, you know, done otherwise because we had a $10,000 loan from the uh, Senate executive and uh, that only paid for the uh, material. And uh, we, in fact, had to uh, spend in excess of that because the ACW came through and uh, bought the doors for us and, uh, and the halter guild donated the windows and the fire door uh, in the vestry area. Uh, they're all steel doors. They cost uh, a lot of money. And so I think probably uh, in excess of $14,000 anyway, perhaps $15,000 were spent just on material. And nothing uh, was spent on labor. It was all done free of charge. And we were very, very pleased about that. Uh, you know, uh, people came along uh, of all ages, teenagers, you know, uh, seniors, and everybody in between, women and men, uh, all alike. And uh, it was anticipated when we uh, started the job uh, by uh, Don Bowdry who did the renovations uh, to the church in the mid-60s 
that it would take two weeks to uh, do the roof of the church. And uh, we had such a labor force here that uh, it took us four days. And we had four beautiful days to do it, too. Yes. Okay, I understand that uh, some renovations have also been done on the front yard of the church. The fence has been took down and some sods have been... Oh, yeah, that's been gone going for the last two years. We started that uh, last year uh, to do some landscaping. And uh, this year we completed it. And uh, all of that uh, work was done uh, through donations, too. It hasn't cost uh, the church anything, actually, but through the envelope uh, funds. Uh, last year we had a, a sod and soil appeal where we asked people to, uh, you know, give five dollars to buy a sod and uh, buy enough soil to uh, put that sod on. And this year, to complete it, we asked for two dollars because we needed, we had enough soil, we need, just needed the sod. And the response, of course, to that has been tremendous. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, more work need to be done, but uh, we're very pleased with what we have done in two years. Uh, we didn't expect to do it all one time, of course. And, uh, it looks very beautiful. We get many nice comments about it, you see, how well the church grounds look. And how well the front end of the church looks, by the way, now. But uh, they are pleased with that, too. Okay, Reverend Charles, thanks for speaking with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. We checked at the town council office to see if they've heard anything further on the opening of the new health care facility. Town clerk Mr. Kasser informed me that to date they still have not heard anything further about when the new hospital will be opening, or in what capacity it will be opening, either as just a clinic or with chronic care as well. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review, coming up in just a moment. Meet Lindsay, a member of the War Amps CHAMP program for child amputees. From the day she was born, CHAMP has been there, with counseling and access to the very best in artificial limbs. Today, Lindsay is an active seven-year-old who enjoys school and her computer. Through your support, CHAMP encourages young amputees to use computers so they can keep up with their schoolwork. The War Amps, still much to do for CHAMPs like Lindsay. Community events. The Burgio Town Council advises residents that on Thursday night, August 19th, 1993, Council will be flushing out the main water lines in town. Flushing will take place from 11 p.m. Thursday to 7 a.m. Friday. This will result in low pressure and cloudy water for a period of time. Council apologizes for any inconvenience. Doug Cannell, Town Manager. All residents who received shut-off notices for outstanding water bills for 1992 and have not paid the total amount 
or made alternate payment arrangements will have their water shut off on Tuesday, August 17, 1993. Stan Kosser, Town Clerk. Notice to NCARP clients. Teresa Peterson, NCARP counselor, will be out of the office from August 16th to 27th to attend an in-service at Cornerbrook. Well, that concludes tonight's program. This is my last news program. My position here at BBS has been terminated. I would like to thank all those who helped me in my efforts to provide informative and enjoyable programs for you over the last three years. I would like to extend a special thank you to all those who volunteered their services to help film programs such as The Bandwagon, Storytime, and This Week in Review. To Clayton Eden and Isaac Felix for hosting The Bandwagon. To Karen, Aaron, and Peggy Joy for all their efforts in making Storytime such a success. I would also like to thank Desmond Pink and Perry Miller for doing the news while I was on vacation and helping out over the last seven weeks. On behalf of BBS and all BBS volunteers, I'm Dave Cooper. Good night.